a route. Dog teams to find the depots, aircraft to supply them. That was Hillary's system. And in the wake of the dog teams, the tractors. Not that it was all smooth blowing. The softer the snow, the less the tractors liked it. areas it was necessary to walk ahead, sounding for a safe passage. 1,500 miles away, Fuchs's progress was a great deal slower. To get from the ice shelf under the inland ice, we had to go over closely crevassed country. We couldn't go around the trouble. The only way was through. There were cracks and holes every few yards. The only answer was to probe and flag a route. Going ahead in pairs, we opened the treacherous lids to find the firmest ground. But you can't be careful and quick. It was monotonous, it was back-breaking, and it was agonizingly slow. But it was better to probe for ten hours than spend twenty digging out a cat. Driving over them was exciting. Dropping in was shattering. It always caused damage, and worst of all, maddening delays. Vehicles weren't expendable. If we were to stick to plan, all of them must reach south ice and go beyond. We crept forward, the vehicles and sledges gouging out the lids of the crevasses. Like this, we made as little as a mile a day. One week, we only covered 11 miles. It was like driving a tank over a minefield. Except if you met it, you'd go down instead of up. Being tail end Charlie was no joke. Our spirits fell all right, but fear was sharp and short and gave way to anger at the delay. Last across, bolted this time. Tow bar broken and the cat poised on two crumbling walls. And if they don't hold, we'd lose the lot. Keeping snow by the miserable shovelful onto a shaky ledge, we made a platform. Then we worked in aluminium bridging for our pontoons to grip on. Despite troubles and hold-ups, and only five to six hours sleep a night, the essential scientific work went on. Every 30 miles, a seismic sounding was made. A pit was bored, and the ice core it produced was examined for temperature, grain size, and density. 48 geophones were laid out to record the echo from the explosion. The echo would travel down through the ice and bounce back from the rock below and according to the time taken for the sound to come back to the surface, the scientists would determine the thickness of the ice cap at that point. 
A shot each 30 miles would give a profile of the great continent beneath. Fuchs's plan was based on making the 2,000 mile crossing in 100 days. But each time one of the vehicles fell in a crevasse, it lost us another day. At this rate of progress, we wouldn't reach the pole, let alone the other side, before winter would close in on us and we would be stranded. No, things weren't looking too good on our side. No such setbacks for Hillary, however, with four depots already set up. Despite some rough going, in general, for the New Zealanders, it was full speed south. Remember, it's south, whichever side you're coming from. miles inland, the limit of the aircraft's range, last and most southerly depot. Hillary's fifth and final fuel and food dump in readiness for the crossing party. With an aircraft as a regular ferry from Scott base, the New Zealanders were always in closer contact with civilization. mission was successfully accomplished. They had time to relax and to read the news from home. Here at Depot 700 was planned the meeting of Fuchs and Hillary. But the crossing party struggling so far behind schedule would be many weeks before they could reach this point. With so much time in hand, Hillary decided that his party should attempt to go on to the pole itself. Certainly every extra mile covered would constitute a mile of known route for the crossing party. So on the tractors went. On the other side, Fuchs's party was still dodging crevasses. Yeah. 